continue on, on the subject of, on the, on the series of the wonder of Christmas, the wonder of Christmas. Can you say that, the wonder of Christmas? The wonder, the wonder of Christmas. Of Christmas. The, the, the amazement, the awe, the reverence of Christmas. And the subject I want to talk about is the Holy Spirit, the, the, the role of the Holy Spirit in the birth of Jesus, the role of the Holy Spirit in the birth of Jesus. And you know, uh, the Holy Spirit's role in the birth of Jesus is the same today. It's the same today. God is still making things come alive. And God is still working in the people's lives. In the person of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, it's expedient that I go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit can't come. And so not only was the Holy Spirit uh, working in the, in the life of Jesus during the time that he was born. Uh, the Holy Spirit came on Mary. We're going to read about that. But the Holy Spirit came on Simeon, who was an older gentleman during that time. And the Holy Spirit showed him that he was going to see the Messiah eyeball to eyeball on planet Earth. The Holy Spirit came on, uh, filled John the Baptist with the Holy Ghost from his womb. The Holy Spirit fell on uh, John the Baptist's mother, Elizabeth, and she prophesied to Mary. The Holy Spirit fell on Mary and she prophesied uh, about the glory of being the mother of the Messiah. The Holy Spirit fell on Anna. She was an old, old woman. She was a widow. And she had been in the house of God praying and Fasting and praying and fasting and the Holy Spirit showed her uh, When Jesus came into the temple uh, When Jesus came into the temple with his mother She was allowed to see uh, the Messiah before she left and So the Holy Spirit was very active uh, In the life of Jesus and his birth and those around him And you know what the Holy Spirit is still active today and The Holy Spirit still wants to do some stuff in your life today Oh praise God yeah. Hallelujah How many people are looking for God to do something new? But well, the Holy Spirit specializes in doing new things in your life. When you think you've experienced all you can experience in God, then voila, he's going to snatch the sheet off of you and show you something new that he wants to do in your life. But you got to be ready. you got to be uh, open. you got to be uh, in a place that God wants you to be. You can't be somewhere that God doesn't want you to be. You have to be right smack dab in the place that God wants you to be to get what God has for you. Amen. You got to be hungry. Turn, turn to your neighbor and say, you got to be hungry. That's right. You got to be hungry. Jesus said it like this. Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be satisfied. So if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're not hungry and thirsting after uh, more of God, more of the presence of God, more of the goodness of God, more of the glory of God, more of God's interaction in your life, you're not going to get it. Uh, especially not in 2014, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to hunger. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffered violent and violence and the violent take it, take it by force. The violent, who are the violent? Those who will rise up in faith. Those who are hungry, hungry for more of God. Those who are thirsty for more of God. I like what David said, I, I rise up early in the morning to seek the Lord. And David said, I get up even at midnight to seek the Lord. And so uh, I believe that if we'll seek uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, more and beginning now and all of 2014 we'll see more of God's inner involvement and interaction in our lives and so I'm excited about that uh, let's bow our heads in prayer Father we thank you and we praise you right now in the name of Jesus Lord give the increase uh, Lord what you want to uh, reveal to us speak uh, through your servant all of you and none of me speak through my mind speak through my mind speak through my vocal cords Father God Lord, Lord, bring transformation, bring, bring, bring change, Father God. Lord, hit this church like never before with your presence. Bring revival and transformation, I pray. Bring spiritual renewal and awakening. Bring freedom from the bondage and the, uh, the, the, the trap of the enemy. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Let that holiness and glory uh, uh, reside in this church, Lord. Let, the re let a revival of holiness and your glory come in this church. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you as a result of this message today. Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Let the church say. Amen. Uh, first, I mean, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a, unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail! Thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Thank God for a word of encouragement from the Lord. How many people need a word of encouragement from the Lord today? Amen. That's what it was. It was a word of encouragement. 
Verse 29. And when he saw, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Everybody say, Favor with God. Favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered the senator, the Holy Ghost. Everybody say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God... For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Praise the Lord. That, that's what I will preach right there. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Let that get down in your spirit today. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Uh, uh, let me just say something about the Holy Spirit. I said the Holy Spirit is very active. So more about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was very active in the life of Jesus. And in the Old Testament, he was very active. And the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person uh, who has his own personality and his own uh, purpose. Uh, but he also uh, is called uh, as, as the third person of the Trinity to, to work as one uh, with the Father and with the Son, Jesus. Uh, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. I like what David said, where can I flee? Where can I go that I can escape the Spirit of God? So wherever you go, the Spirit of God is. Uh, the Holy Spirit not only just omnipresent, but the Holy Spirit is omniscient. The Holy Spirit knows everything. Knows the, the Holy Spirit knows the mind of the Father and the mind of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit knows even your mind. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. And the Holy Spirit is omnipotent. The Holy Spirit has all power. Everybody say the Holy Spirit got all power. The Holy Spirit is all power. And that, that's, what, that's what the angel Gabriel was trying to get across to Mary. That the Holy Spirit, don't worry about having a baby by the natural means. The Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you. And with his power, you're going to conceive child of, of Almighty God. Well, the Holy Spirit has omnipresence, omniscience, and omnipotence. Uh, you know, the, the, the birth of Jesus Christ... Uh, who was born into the earth was for a purpose of saving all mankind from their sin, taking all mankind's punishment upon himself, securing forgiveness and cleansing for us all, and making us righteous in the sight of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might be the righteousness of God. And we thank God for that righteousness. And, and I like what Paul said, how, how he talks in Ephesians chapter 2. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2 real quick. And he talks about the state that you and I were in. If we're going to understand the Holy Spirit, we've got to understand uh, the significance and the importance of the Holy Spirit. How many people know that the Bible says that God has given us the Holy Spirit to help us live right? You know, you can't live right apart from the Holy Spirit. All of us need the Holy Spirit on the inside of us to help us do right. We needed the Holy Spirit to even come to church. But, but now, before we got the Holy Spirit, before we got saved, we didn't have the Holy Spirit to help us do right, to help us walk right, to help us talk right. And Paul talks about the state that you and I were in uh, before we got saved. And when everybody gets saved, when you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit of God on the inside. And to appreciate the Holy Spirit, you got to understand the state that you was in before you got saved. I know some of y'all say, I made it to church this Sunday, Sunday morning on my own. No, it was the Holy Spirit on the inside. You said, get up. You need to go to church. Amen. Hello, get up. You need to pray. You need to do right. That's the Holy Spirit on the inside when you get born again. That's God living on the inside of you. 
That's the difference between Christianity and all these other religions. And Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. But all these other religions, their, their, their savior is dead. But our savior, Jesus, is alive. And he's alive on the inside of us in the person of the Holy Spirit. But listen to the state that you and I were in before we got saved. Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Are you there? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore, remember. Everybody say, remember. Amen. Remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time, everybody say, at that time. Now, it's in verse 11, circumcision. Circumcision was a sign of a covenant. When you came into Christ, you and I were circumcised in our hearts. We were, we were, we were, uh, 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 God did a surgery on it in our spirit, took out that heart of stone, gave us a heart of flesh, gave us a heart that's just like God. That's what it's talking about in verse 11. Look at verse 12. That at that time you were without Christ, being alien from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's the state you and I were in before we got saved. But now, everybody say, but now. But now. Thank God for that but. Because that but erases, erases everything that was just said. But now in Christ, you who are sometimes afar off are made near or nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who have made, who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in the flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinance for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that by and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached to you which were far off, and to them which were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit. Everybody said we have access to God. By one spirit. But here's what I want us to see. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and his work and role in our lives. But look at verse 13. But now in Christ. You who are sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe that word but is one of the most powerful words in the human language. Because see, but erases everything that went before. Thank God for but. Everybody say, thank God for but. Thank God for but. Uh, but uh, you, you hear those stories all day. The but takes us from depression to hope. It takes us from defeat to, to victory. You hear those stories about the plane crash. The plane crash, your relative was on it, but... Your relatives made it. Uh, you have a, a terrible cancer that's about to take over your body, but we got a cure for it. Your, 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 your son was in a car, your daughter was in a car accident, but they all right. And Jesus became the but and in, 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 in getting us to avoid destruction and eternal damnation. Oh, hallelujah. So thank God for Jesus being, being the but in our lives. The Apostle Paul said we were on our way to hell, but Jesus stepped into human, human history and, and rescued us from eternal damnation. But here's, here's what I want to see. But not only that, he qualified us to share in the inheritance. Everybody say the inheritance. Yeah. Now what the inheritance is, part of the big part of the inheritance that you and I get when we get saved is the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. God living on the inside of you. Somebody say, God living on the inside of me. God is the inheritance. The inheritance. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. You don't have to read it. I'll read it. It says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The inheritance of God is the person of the Holy Spirit living on the inside. The Bible said, You are the temple for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. Now, one of the things the Holy Spirit wants to do is he wants to encourage. He wants to encourage you. But, you know, in order to get the encouragement, in order to get what, the, what God has for you, you know, and God has a thousand ways to encourage you. How many people need encouragement this morning? And, I, and we raised our hand earlier. But I believe God wants to encourage everybody. And uh, I'm going to uh, pray for everybody today after the service. I'm going to anoint you with oil because I believe that 
that, that, that what I received in terms of encouragement, uh, God wants to put on this church. Now, if you want to you wanna get what the Holy Spirit has for you, the Holy Spirit's got encouragement, he's got advice, he's got wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel and might. Some of our, some of our answers are tied up into the, in the Holy Spirit. And it's not until you connect with the Holy Spirit that you're going to get what God has for you, that answer, that deliverance, that, that power, that extra strength that you need. The Holy Spirit can do in your life in one day uh, more than what you can do in your life in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. The Holy Spirit can take you from the back and put you all the way in the front. The Holy Spirit can cause you to be uh, at the top when everybody's trying to push you down. When the boss then fired you, gave you a pink slip, it will be too late because if the Holy Spirit has come upon your life, it doesn't matter if they give you a pink slip. It doesn't matter if they fire you. It doesn't matter if they cut your finances in half. If God's Spirit is on your life, he'll take you from the back seat all the way to the front seat. Amen. Now, the only thing you have to do to get the... the Get a God encounter, get an encounter with the Holy Spirit, is you have to go after it with all your heart. Yeah. You, you're going to have to do something uh, that you don't normally do. That's why we talked about the fasting and whatnot. It's something that, uh, that, that you don't normally do, but if you do it, God will bless you. It, it can be something small. It can be something God be trying to tell you uh, to, uh, to do that will cause the Holy Spirit to come on your life and radically change your whole life. It could be God telling you to forgive somebody. It could be God telling you to stop sinning. It could be, uh, and he's always going to do that. He's going to always, he's gonna, he could be telling you to spend more time in the word. You ain't spending time in the word. And God's trying to get a word to you. He's trying to get a word of victory and, and wisdom and direction in your life, but you're not coming to him so that he can, he can give you what he has for you. And, and, and I was, uh, we, we had a, how many people know, how many people experienced that three days of Thanksgiving fast that we had? I tell you, it was wonderful. And I tell you, you know, I just couldn't give God thanks enough. I couldn't give God thanks enough. And since Teresa told me about Apostle Hinton's, we're going to see a tape in a moment. Apostle Hinton, how many people know Apostle Hinton? I mean, one of the generals of the faith, been around preaching for 60 years, all over, evangelist, a uh, powerful man of God. Uh, Sister Reese was telling me about a special Thanksgiving service that he was having. And on Thanksgiving Day, I said, oh, man, it's on Thanksgiving Day. I wish it was on another day. Because, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, traditionally, me, me and my wife, we just stay at home, watch TV, relax, take a chill pill. I go in the kitchen and eat a little turkey, eat a little ham all throughout, you know, all the day and whatnot until we go have Thanksgiving dinner. And, and that was just tradition. And, and, and But yet the Holy Spirit was saying, I want you to break that tradition. Because I got something for you. God said, if you just give up something, I'll give you something else. That's why Jesus said, how can I pour new wine into old wine skins? Some of us are trying to get something from God, doing it the same way we used to do it. Some of us used to cry. Started out crying to get God to move. Sometimes when we first come to God, he will move when we start out crying. But then after a period of time, he wants us to grow up. He wants us to go in the kitchen and get our own body. Well, Sister Teresa wanted, uh, she said, you, you need to come, check it out. And I said, well, uh, but then I heard, I started to back out, but then I heard the Spirit of God say, you need to step out of tradition. You need to step out of what you're normally doing. And I thought about the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, ten, the ten lepers that got healed. Only one came back to give, say thanks. But that one that came back to give thanks, God gave him additional blessing. And I told God, I said, you know, that's right, I will go. I told my wife, I said, we will go to Apostle Hinton's uh, Thanksgiving service on, on, on Thanksgiving Day. Because I want to I wanna just give God some more thanks. I'm going to wear out giving, giving God thanks. Oh, that's right, I'm going to wear out. Some of us need to wear out just giving God thanks. And get what God has for us. And uh, I went to Al, you got that tape ready? about a thousand people at this church and whatnot. I never talked to Pastor Hinton in my whole life. I know about him. I love for him to come here and, and preach at his church, but I never, I, he, he didn't know me. I knew him, but me and my wife were there. We, we, we were in the back, we were in a, a back row seat, but you know, somebody just came sovereignly, the second row, and came sovereignly and told us to come and sit on the first front row. See, we're setting ourselves up. If you hunger after God, just do an extra little bit after God. God, you'll see a mighty change. The Spirit of God will move in your life. Just like he moved in 
and me and my wife lie. I want you to see this here.
Sunday school, right. you ask them for prayer, you ask God for a breakthrough, and you're not willing to even take a little step yeah. and be where God wants you to be. Some people say, I ain't coming to prayer, Pastor. All he do, all he world and did come to prayer. <laughs> I want you to come to prayer so you can get what God has for you. Because God's gonna meet you in that place of prayer. Amen. Minister Marty, uh, Sister Teresa introduced a beautiful song. Sweet hour of prayer. And, and I like that sweet hour of prayer because, you know, we need to change our attitude about coming to prayer in the church. We don't need to come to prayer. Oh, Pastor, make me come to prayer. No, it ought to be a sweet hour. Yes. It ought to be a precious moment. It ought to be so special because it's a time when you can meet God and God can be with you. And, you know, when you get in the presence of God, the Bible says there's liberty and there's freedom. And you never have to walk, you, whenever you get in the presence of God, you never have to walk away with any un, unmet need. Because God will meet the need. Oh, hallelujah. I, I want to pray. We don't have a lot of time. But you know what? That anointing that, that he anointed me with, I believe is, is on my life. And I want to give it out this morning. I got a lot more to say in my message, but, but I, I just want to stop right now. And, but it's only for those that are hungry. Amen. It's only for those who say, you know, I'll, I'll break tradition, God. I'll, I'll give, I'll, I'll walk in forgiveness. I'll walk in holiness. God, I'll, I won't try to seek my own way. God, I'll be open for a new thing that you want to bring in my life. If you tell me to do something new, I won't, I won't resist. I'll just yield to the Holy Spirit and what he wants to do. So I want to pray. I got at that, that, that service, he gave us, he gave everybody there a bottle of anointing oil, which is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And he put uh, three, uh, he had ministers put three uh, mustard. mustard seeds on the inside of here. And I tell you, I just been anointing myself, anointing my family. Hallelujah. And I just believe that the 2014 is going to be the best year. But let me tell you something. It's not going to work. God, God, this anointing that God put on my life is not going to work on your life if you're not willing to open up and yield to God. If you're going to be stubborn in your own way and resist the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit bro, is, is, is a perfect gentleman. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's not going to gain for you in your life if you don't want it. Jesus said that, that he stands at the door and knock. If any man will open or any woman open that door, then I'll come in and sup with them and he with me. 
I have a lot more in the message. We don't have time to go into it. The purpose of the Holy Spirit, how he functions, how he's kind of like an alarm system when something comes in your life. You have the Holy Spirit to ring a bell on the inside and you let you know that this person ain't right or that thing you're doing ain't right. Uh, the Holy Spirit is, is kind of like, uh, in your life, it's kind of like going from a rowboat to a motorboat. You know, when you're in a rowboat, you got to do it yourself. But when you're in a motorboat, all you can do is stand there and hold that motor. When the Holy Spirit comes on your life, then you, he going to do all the work. I don't care if it, it went business, home, whatever. When the Holy Spirit comes on, you go from a rowboat to a motorboat. The Holy Spirit's kind of like a, a tank. Uh, like those tanks those deep sea drivers have. If they want to stay, they got to have that in because they're going into a different environment. They're going into a water a environment of H2O. They can't live down there. So they got to be connected with the gas tank on their back to the world from which they came from. You and I came from God. And if we're going to stay, if we're going to survive down here in this environment, which is a foreign environment, we got to have the water tank of the Holy Spirit on our backs. We got to stay connected to God. And some of you say, well, I got the Holy Spirit. Well, you need a fresh outpour of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, I got to do something wrong to get the more of the Holy Spirit. You could be doing something right and still need the Holy Spirit in your life. Just like drive, driving a car. I could drive my car, fill it up with gas, drive it, and be doing the right thing with that car wherever I go. But you know what? I'm still going to run out of gas. You could be serving the Lord doing the right thing and whatnot. Doing what God wants you to do. You still going to run out of the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit and need a fresh outpour of the Spirit on your life. And that which we saw there was just a fresh outpour of the Spirit of God. Yes. See, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. He knows, he knows what the right word that you need at the right moment. I didn't know I needed a, a word like that, but we went to the serve. We stepped out of our comfort zone, got hungry, and went there and sat there. And, you know, our stomachs was growling and whatnot, because normally, you know, we'd be at home. And we knew that we was going to be there until about 1.30. But we were willing to sacrifice to get what God had. Someone said, well, I got, I got to see. I got to have some little signs of the Holy Spirit coming on me before, before, before I know he'll come on me. And sometimes he will come on you in little increments. But, you know, sometimes God will show up like a storm. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit came. You say, you could be serving God and say, where's, where's, when's God, when is my day? When is God going to come on me? He can come on you like a flash flood. I want to pray for those who say, Pastor, whatever, it could be a small thing God telling you to do. Coming to prayer is a small thing. Getting right with God, stopping sin is a small thing because the Bible says he gives the Holy Spirit to help us to stop sin. Hello. It could be that. It could be God telling you to step out, read the Bible more, pray more. Minister to your family more. Get involved in ministry more. It could be something as small as that where God steps in and says, now I'm going to answer all them prayers you've been praying. Because you're in the right place where God wants you to be. Let me say this last thing. You know, in the Old Testament, when the children of Israel came out of Egyptian bondage, they were led to the promised land by a pillar of fire at night to keep them warm and a pillar of cloud by day. And the Bible says that God was in the cloud. And wherever the cloud hovered and stopped, that's where the children of Israel were supposed to stop. And when the cloud lifted and began to move forward, that's when it was time for the children of Israel to pack their bags and follow the glory cloud. Because wherever the glory cloud was, there was always provision and sustenance, protection and blessing. Now, some of the people in that time period said, you know what, Moses, I see you and the children of Israel getting ready to go to the glory cloud. I ain't going. <laughs> you know what happened to them? They got left in the wilderness. But all those who said, you know what, I'm going with the glory cloud. I'm going with God. Those are the ones that got blessed. And I just want to pray. Hallelujah. I want to anoint you with all. I want to give you everything that God has given me. Freely I have received, so I want to freely give. I know God's got great things in my life. Hallelujah. And it's getting ready to happen. Somebody said, how's it going to happen? The Holy Ghost going to make it happen. <laughs> just like Mary, just like Angel Gabriel said to Mary, when she said, how's this going to happen? 
I mean, Angel Gabriel said the Holy Ghost gonna come on you. But you know what? You gotta be hungry. I want to pray for those that are hungry. If you're hungry, come on up here. Praise the Lord. 